So I would really love to uh, introduce the rest of you guys to a member of the community, Zubair, who's been talking in the chat, uh, who has been doing his own form of experimentation. Uh, and I think this is sort of, we're gonna take the next sort of 15 minutes of the webinar to do a little bit of Q and A, to talk about what he's been learning as he's been exploring the new workload metric. Um, and this is part of, you know, I really appreciate having the community here. And Zubair has been a great contributor in that. So uh, looking forward to hearing what you guys- Love uh, it. Thanks discuss. so much, Vivian. Uh, very glad uh, for you to be here, Zubair. Uh, very excited for uh, the community to get to meet you a little bit. Um, I figured what we, maybe a good place to start. Uh, I've seen you around on Twitter and the forum and, and whatnot, but in case people haven't, uh, maybe a good place to start is it just if you want to introduce yourself, share a little bit about um, the type of work that you do and maybe how long you've been using Bubble. Uh, hi, Andrew. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, just a quick sound check. Can you guys hear me okay and see me okay? All good. Okay. So I'm Zubair. Uh, I've, uh, I'm a software engineer turned no coder. So I've been a software engineer for around 10 plus years now, I think. Uh, it's It feels strange, like, like a decade. It feels like a long time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, but my background is not software engineering in the web. Uh, it's more in uh, embedded devices like your uh, TV set-top box or your Wi-Fi router, or if you go to the mall and you see a display which is running some advertisements, so like over-the-air updates. So that was like the embedded world I was in. Uh, but I was always curious about startups, Y Combinator, and that type of stuff. Uh, but I could never wrap my head around JavaScript. Uh, every time I tried, I was like, it's just, it's just not going through. Uh, until I found out about Bubble, which is, uh, I think, three plus years ago. And uh, the way it was described to me was uh, Bubble is the WordPress of web apps. And I was like, okay, I know WordPress and Bubble, WordPress, web apps. Okay. So I went in, I tried in my first repeating group and everything. I was like, okay, this is it. I'm going to leave my job. <laughs> I'm going to do this Bubble thing. Uh, and uh, it worked out. So I've been running a bubble agency for around three years now. I've uh, been helping founders build their startups, uh, loads of clients, uh, recently a big win. Uh, we found out uh, one of our apps uh, was in the top 100 in terms of page views. And I was like, I received an email from Bubble. And I was like, uh, uh, one of your apps is like that. And I'm like, which one? I have no idea which one. <laughs> So we've got quite a few, which one's happening, what's happening there? And she was like, okay, that one. Ah, okay, it's interesting. So, but yeah, so I do I do have a deck. I, absolutely, you came prepared, uh, I love it. Um, maybe while like you're pulling on? that up, uh, um, something I mean, obviously the, the goal of here. this particular webinar yeah. is uh, to understand optimizing workload usage in your app. Uh, and one of the things that really caught our eye about Zubair is that he, uh, similar to my diving in and experimenting, uh, has been doing some experiments of his own, uh, some of which have been posted on, on YouTube. I was excited to see some of those videos already. Um, and so really just thought this would be a great opportunity for Zubair to talk through some of the things that he's learned and found, uh, some of the testing that he's doing. Uh, so I love that you came prepared with your own slides. This is, this is awesome. Uh, so feel free to take it away, Zubair. This is great. <laughs> Professional. I do. I yes. know. I, I, uh, do you guys see the slides? Okay, that's fine. Uh, all right. So I'm going to emphasize this particular phrase, unlearn and relearn, uh, because that's essentially what I found. Now, I'm going to give us an example here. Never in my wildest imagination did I imagine I'd have to unlearn Googling things and chat GPTing things. Uh, I mean, it's literally four months ago, and I was like, okay, Google, no, 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 let's just go chat GPT. Never did I ever think that would happen. Uh, but technology moves, and uh, you always have to unlearn and uh, learn new patterns. And this is a similar point in time with Bubble. Uh, there are old patterns which work totally fine. Uh, but they're optimized in a different fashion. So I'm going to go over five of them, which I found. Now, the first uh, was a quiz app 
And in the quiz app, we uh, the feature request was uh, basically to track how much time a user takes to answer a question. And okay, do every five seconds, update the timestamp, very heavy, okay. Uh, the new pattern, when the question loads, start a timer in the front end, when the person clicks next question, stop the timer and once refresh the page. So if it's if somebody takes two minutes to answer a question, instead of updating the database uh, 20, 50 times, whatever, you don't need to do that. You can easily just uh, start, stop. It's just a different way of doing, achieving the same objective. One is more efficient, the other is wasteful. Uh, quick example number two, uh, we also had a report uh, to run on a thousand items. Uh, the old pattern, which was very low capacity use, optimized for capacity metric, a uh, thousand items to change, recursive workflow. For every one item change, you have the overhead of the schedule API workflow, current date time plus five seconds, then another workflow starts, then another fetch happens, and, and then the actual change happens. Very good and optimized mm -hmm. nicely for low capacity use but high workload unit use. New pattern, okay, we're just gonna call 10 workflows and we're gonna just bulk process 100 at a time. I'm really excited, Josh has uh, mentioned on the forum that bulk uh, modification and bulk processing is getting uh, a lot of attention and energy from engineering on the forum. Zubinder, uh, just Q3, to recap, Q4, on, just uh, to recap on, on that last through. slide, I find that one especially now, interesting. Yeah. In fact, that was the, uh, the YouTube video that really caught my eye. Yeah. Um, recursive workflows tend to be one of the things that uh, yeah. was kind of heralded as like the pinnacle of efficiency in a bubble app because of how capacity worked in the old system. Um, and so I think this is a, a, yeah. a really great thing to totally. call out to users totally. that given the change, going back to Kate's example of uh, a, the distance you're able to travel versus a speed limit. Uh, there are certain areas and portions of your app that yeah. uh, might make a lot of sense to reconsider uh, where that speed limit is no longer a limit. And now we want to minimize the total amount of calls in order to make that happen. Uh, so really, really interesting yeah. stuff. Just wanted to, to recap on that one in particular. I think that's great. Yeah. Yeah, and I think just to add to that, we have yet to see the benefits of the unlimited speed limit. That's the other part I'm really excited about as well. It's like, okay, no speed limit. Uh, how like how fast and responsive everything's going to become. Uh, that's going to be interesting to see. We have yet to see it, so looking forward to it as well. Now, moving forward, so <laughs> uh, we had to raise a bug with Bubble that one of our drop drop downs is not is showing half the list and uh, it had the 7000 items in the database and i was like why is it showing all the way from a to m and not more and then bubbles like well, there's a 5000 limit on drop downs <laughs> don't use drop downs <laughs> so we're like ah oh, okay so we'll just replace them with a search box the price i'm sure when we started making the app we didn't realize that it's going to just endlessly grow uh but yeah so the dropdown just fetches everything in the front end. It was super slow. It was super slow. And it was like, yeah, it's slow. Let's just roll with it. But now it's also expensive. Uh, so now we're like, okay, let's just replace it with a search box. It was like, I think a list of like manufacturers or list of something. Uh, and it's like search box. Now one caveat, somebody pointed on the YouTube video on this, uh, correctly pointed. Sometimes the UX needs to show the options. Like people may not know to search type and search finding. So if you have to show the options, although if I'm honest, even if you have to show the options, I'm sure you're not displaying 5,000 of them. Uh, you could, that may be needed. Uh, but yeah, that's one example that we found uh, because as I said, just unnecessarily fetching from the database, yeah. every and page one, load. Every one user, question just to uh, jump in there, and, uh, it'd be curious to hear so, your thoughts on, on the ones you've shared yeah. so far, and then maybe we could do it uh, along the way with, with the next slides going forward. I'd, I'd be really curious to hear uh, how you're identifying these. Uh, it sounds like there it, there was a bug report that kind of prompted uh, the dropdown in particular, but with some of the other ones, is this 
something where you're setting up tests or yeah. are you using the log stab? Okay. It's, it's, the, it, it's the same log stab. Look at the log stab, the big pie, uh, sometimes the second, third one. Yeah. Uh, because sometimes the big pie is, well, that's a workflow we need. <laughs> it's like, uh, we yeah. can't really shave that one. So let's look at the next one. And then let's look at the next one. Uh, this drop down, the bug came like right around the time the optimization this like it was literally kind of together. So we would have caught it in the audit in the log tab as well. Uh, but yeah, it was pretty close, same timing uh, that this came through. So it was a bug yep, report. Absolutely. I also and saw actually that there was something an unnecessary. Uh, uh, you you mentioned in that last yeah. statement that I think is uh, an incredible point, and so I just want to. Uh, like ping on it for just a second um, that you looked into a particular issue and you identified our app has to have this feature. And so there isn't anything we can change about this particular feature. Um, and I, I think that's something really important for us as developers to realize uh, that just like uh, other similar systems, AWS or, or others that measure uh, usage based uh, in, in that sort of approach, there are going to be certain areas of your app where optimizations aren't possible or for the way that that app works, uh, we're just not able to optimize any further. And that's where as developers and, and really as business owners, um, we're put in the driver's seat to then decide, okay, if this is a priority, then I'm going to optimize in other areas or I'm gonna get a plan that supports that particular feature because I have to have it. Um, and ultimately, there are some cases, I mean, I'll, I'll speak from a personal standpoint for a second. Uh, so Shoot Assist, mainly because it was easy, uh, is based on unlimited pricing. So there is one price, and when a photographer pays it, uh, they have access to every feature of Shoot Assist. Uh, and so one of the things that I've been learning, especially in light of new pricing, is that that was not a great decision, that uh, I really need to readjust Shoot Assist business model to be based a little bit more closely to the value it provides. And so for me, I've identified that that's number of users. And so really, I think those are, those are the extremes here to some degree as, as you're going through your particular apps is that uh, there might be things you look at and go, I've got to have it, I'm not going to optimize, and I'm going to plan in other ways. Yeah. There might be things you look at where you go, like the drop down that Zubair shared, where, uh, that, you know, it, it's just it, like we didn't think about it. We didn't have to think about it before, and it's easy to optimize now. Uh, and there might be areas where a, a business change to how yeah. you run your business, structure your business, uh, would be really helpful. Sorry, I keep jumping in, Zubair. Feel free. Uh, We'd love to see your other slides here. Great points. No, no, totally, totally. Totally, totally, no, happy to exchange ideas back and forth. So the fourth one, uh, it's switching from front end to back end. Now this one's, uh, it's, it's tricky because it's not something that you'll find, oh, I'm just gonna make this one change here and it's gonna kind of re reduce the workload unit. Uh, but this is something that it's a pattern that across uh, the app we'll use that, okay, we're gonna do something in the front end. And now because for UX, we don't want a very long front end workflow, uh, which is doing data heavy stuff. Uh, we're gonna have, we're gonna go back to the back end and we're gonna continue there. Uh, and the user can just see an alert and just carry on with their job. Send the email from the back end, yada, yada. Now, to schedule an API workflow and pass parameters, and then current date time plus five seconds list extra, and then it schedules five seconds later, and then it actually starts. So across the app, if it does, if, if this pattern repeats many times, it can add a bit of weight to the app. Uh, and that's where the new pattern is more around, okay, we're just gonna use more status changes and database triggers instead of the schedule API workflow. Uh, it's it's a small, subtle one. It's not like the drop down to search box, oh, quick 10K workload unit saved. Uh, this is probably more of a like uh, a change in behavior, like the recursive one. You just don't want to do recursive anymore like that. So this too is like, okay, instead of like quickly going to the schedule API workflow, 
uh, action, just, okay, I'm gonna just switch to database trigger and continue there. Uh, so that's one example. The last one, I think you, it was touched on previously as well, uh, user analytics. So just on page load, just sprinkle a lot of like, uh, create a thing here, create a thing there, create a thing there. Uh, it's essentially capacity is like the all you can eat buffet. Uh, you got a fixed price and you're like trying to like just be wasteful in the food, foods left on the plate. You didn't like it, just leave it. And yeah, just there's entries in the database which you're just like leaving it all over the place. But if you order from the restaurant, a particular starter, a main course and the dessert, yeah, you make sure you either finish everything or you put everything in a box and take it with you. So you're not wasteful as such. Uh, but yeah, in terms of the old pattern, sprinkle analytics all over the place for no reason, just because it's cheap and free. New pattern will like, okay, let's use segment mix panel. Uh, this is like, even in the software world, uh, very few people would be like, oh, I'll just create a table in my database and I'll just start inserting entries upon entries in my own database. Uh, web devs and software devs will almost always integrate some third party uh, analytics tool, uh, particularly because the charts are pretty nice as well in those dashboards and charts. So that's the fifth one that we're finding. Uh, fundamentally, unlearn and relearn. So I'm going to do some shameless self promotion. I've got a YouTube channel. We're very close to a thousand subscribers. Uh, and I've got, I'm going to try and learn as much as I can and try and post it there. Uh, and also post on Twitter and LinkedIn. And uh, if you'd like to kind of just I reach out, it. feel free to email me I, or just- uh, I know one thing you mentioned that you're well. working on is so uh, potentially putting together a community app of sorts, it sounded like, where you're gonna uh, build little samples of some of these learnings. I love that idea. Uh, so certainly keep us updated if, if that uh, goes live. Uh, I'm sure that'll be a post. Yeah. Once there are more, yeah, once there are more tips on it. So one, one of the YouTube videos is based on this app and the editor link is public as well. The recursively make changes and the 100, 100 at a time. And uh, the logs will show what happened, how much it happened. But yeah, over time, so this was the scheduled one and this was the CSV import, but yeah, within scheduled, that's the make changes one at a time and that's the make changes 100 at a time. So the plan was to kind of like, okay, let's collect these as I learn and build and test in the test app, but also share the editor. Uh, and I've, I'm trying to reach out to others in the community as well to uh, try and just uh, collaborate. Uh, yeah, amazing. the whole bubble community it. is amazing. Perfect. And uh, we can do this together. Thank you so much there. And thank you, Andrew.